Hello, welcome to Curry Enterprises. It's January 2012. We're getting ready for a big move here at Curry Enterprises. We're moving to a new facility in Corona, about 40,000 square feet. But before we go, we want to show you what Curry Enterprises is currently like. I'm standing in the reception area or the main office to Curry right here. Above me is my sister-in-law, she's the manager, and here we got our receptionist and, and our shipping clerks. I'm standing in front of a mural that was done about in 1999 that's of my dad and a couple of his cars. Unfortunately, he won't be going with us, but we're going to show you around and show you what we're taking with us. Well, I mean, my kids were here from the beginning. Um, it was more my kids' kids. You know, even when I talked to my kids about our old shop, and we had the stories, you know, the stories about, you know, injuring ourselves and working when we were kids. You know, that all relates you know, to before they were born. And we barely have any photographs of what happened there. There's, a, you know, there's probably maybe a half dozen photographs of inside the shop there. And, uh, you know, I, I wish I would have had the foresight to take a couple pictures or do a video, you know, at that time before we tore that all down you know, to even show my own kids. At this end of the show, we got Brian Shepard. He's our marketing director. He's been here for over 13 years. He does all of our internet and does the ads for the magazines and that type of stuff. And over here, we have Chris. He's actually been here about three years now, and he does our purchasing. So if we, if we run out of stuff, it, it's Chris's fault. If you don't like our ads, it's Brian's fault. <laughs> when you first enter Crane Enterprises, you're going to meet Sue. She's also going to be the first person you talk on the telephone when you call Curry Enterprises. She's been here over seven years. Right across from Sue, we have Josie. She does all our shipping, whether it's UPS, Federal Express, or Common Carrier. She's been here for over 15 years. And right behind them, we got our sales manager and engineering department. We have two firsts in this room. Kent was the first salesperson we were hired over 16 years ago. And over here is Dave and he's actually the first engineer we ever hired over five years ago. We're in our sales department now and I'm standing next to Daryl. Daryl's like our resident road racing expert, so if you're gonna call Curry Enterprises and you were into the road racing or something like that, you may wanna ask for Daryl to help you. In front of Daryl, we have Chris. Chris is kind of like our off-road guy. Uh, he's a Jeep Speed racer and is into off-road stuff, so if you had a question about something off-road or, you know, about a Jeep or a four-wheel drive or an off-road vehicle, you may want to ask for Chris to help you. This is Travis. His interests lie mostly in drag racing and vintage cars, but he's also an expert in off-road, industrial applications, and military. So if you have any of those applications, you may want to talk to Travis. Right behind Travis, we have Art. Art's our shop manager. What he does, he actually approves the orders that our salespeople are putting together to make sure we can actually build the stuff they're asking for. Upstairs, we find the heart of a true family business. See, I can't do it. <laughs> Upstairs, we find the heart of a true family business. My sister-in-law for over 30 years is our office manager, and her assistant for over 20 years is Michelle. My two brothers, Charles and Ray, are also a very important part of this family organization. Charles being in charge of the sales department downstairs, and Raymond running the business end of things. Our R&D department is where you'll find me most of the time. My office is right here. I have an engineer and a fabricator that work directly for me. This is where we develop our new products and test fit them onto the vehicles that they're going to be used on. We also refine our current products in here. In 1985, this was the main office to Curry Enterprises. It is now the lunch area for the employees of Curry Enterprises. Mine and my brother's offices were back here where our shop manager's offices are. The reception area is where I'm standing and Kent's office was over there. I'm just leaving the sales department. I'm standing right in front of Josie's office. This is the end of the line for your parts at Curry Enterprises. You're either going to pick it up from our will call area, which is here, or it's going to be shipped from our shipping and receiving, which is right beside us. From here, we're going to go to the other end of the building and look at our manufacturing process from the start to the end, which is here. Well, for us, probably everything we know about business probably came from my dad. My dad was a production manager over 300 people at one time at Taylor and Manufacturing. So as far as the way we relate to our employees, a lot of that, you know, what we learned or how we do it actually 
came from him. Everything we have ever done back when we were working for my dad was piecework. So you're trying to do it as fast as you can because you know every piece you complete, you're getting paid you know, a nickel for or whatever. And uh, so I'm drilling these parts, and the fixture is pretty, you know, loosey goosey. And I got my finger on the top of the part and drilling, 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 and pushing as hard as I can. And all of a sudden, the, the drill cotton part spun around and it just peeled the skin all the way off the end of this finger, so just the bone was sticking out. And I smashed mine when my dad was actually teaching me how to run an engine lathe. Like the very first time, see that finger right there? Did, did the chuck key come over? Yeah, turned it on with the chuck key and then smashed my finger. That one. Like a little banana. Back here we used to store all of our old inventory, old rear ends and our old parts. We actually used these storage containers for a lot of our inventory. In our new facility, everything will be stored inside. That includes our raw material, our sawing, and our cleaning facility. On this side, we have raw material storage such as bar stock and tubing, which is kept really close to the saws where it's parted and sent to the machine shop. And on this side, we have a large inventory of our crate rear ends. Once the tubing is cut, it is brought in to be prepared to either go into a nine inch housing or a Dana style housing. From here, it goes to the TIG welding area, which if a customer specifies, we could TIG weld their housing together or it goes to the tacking area where the tube is tacked into the housing and then from there it goes into the MIG welding area where the complete housing is MIG welded and brackets are added. All of our axle cores are stored on this rack. From here they go to the cutting department where the axle is cut to size. From the, from the cutoff saw they actually go to the machine shop where the axle is splined and the bolt pattern is drilled for the axle stud. From there, it comes back to this area where we have a special built machine that installs the axle studs. I'm standing in the middle of our third member department. This is where we assemble eight inch and nine inch complete third members. New bearings, new gears, positive tractions, air lockers, Detroit lockers, whatever they need. On the other side of this bench, they actually build open carriers and positive traction carriers. And directly above us, we have all the parts that supply this area. Ring and pinions, lockers, bearings, whatever. These are some of the oldest machines in our machine shop. As we go forward, the machines get newer. This is the production side of a machine shop where we make our Johnny joints, gears, sprockets, and other pieces that we actually build in production that go into inventory. On the other side of the machine shop is our axle department. That's where we build the axles that go into the customer end. This is where we machine our Johnny Joint ball centers, the Johnny Joint sleeves, gears and sprockets, and housing ends. Where we machine our axles is right beside our production machine shop. This is where we machine the axle, spline it, and drill the bolt pattern. We also do other jobs such as drilling the brake drums. In our new facility, the axle machine department will be located in the manufacturing area so it brings our inventory closer to production. The final assembly department is where all the pieces come together. The axles come here, the third members come here, the housings come here, the brakes come here. This is where we put it all together, make it into a complete unit, and from here it goes to the shipping department. If it's not a complete unit, if it's just parts, then the parts are assembled here and the parts go to the shipping department. When the products are finished, they come back to the front of the building where we started, where they're packaged and shipped out. So it's either by UPS or by Common Carrier or by Federal Express. We built a rear end and we you know, set it up in our yard at, at the old shop and he came and you know, took a picture of it and uh, I mean, it was a crappy picture and a crappy little ad. And you know, at the time, you know, you know, the, the phone number that our business had was my parents' home phone number. So we run a, you know, three national ads in in those magazines. And I can remember, you know, the, you know, couple, take, took a long time back in those days. It was probably better than three months later. All of a sudden, you know, my mom telling. Yeah, some guy called from Kentucky and, and was looking for a rear end for his, you know, his Packard. Or, and some guy called from, 
and you know, you know, she's giving me these messages, and, and I'm, you know, we're on the, on the phone, and they're chasing these things down, and and uh, you know, it was funny because you know, we had the screen door with the spring on it, you know, and my my mom would be in the house, we'd be in the in the shop, and you know, the phone's laying, we didn't have a hold button. She put set the phone down, you could hear the, you know, John, get the phone, crash, you know, the the screen door would come slamming shut, and you know, get you know, you know, the uh, go answer the phone. We had a phone in the shop. And pick up the phone, you know, and my mom would be on the side. Yeah, you got the phone. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Hang up, mom. <laughs> in 1985, when we moved into this building, we never figured we'd be here for 27 years. My daughter was two years old, and my son was one. He hadn't even learned to walk yet. And now I have a granddaughter on the way. From here, who knows what history Curry's going to make? but the next time I see you, we'll probably be in a new location. Uh, let's see. When we moved here in 1985, my daughter was two years old and my son hadn't even learned to walk yet. Now I have a grant. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't think it, I can say it, but I think it. <laughs>